This video will show you how to operate a batch calorimeter. That is, we are measuring the energy released by a chemical system. You will be mixing two different chemicals which will give off heat. You will measure the amount of energy that is released by that and do thermochemical uh, calculations on that data. The calorimeter is a Dewa flask or thermos flask. It sits here and it should sit on top of a stirrer plate. You are monitoring the temperature using a, a laptop. These are somewhat ancient. They're not quite as old as you, but they're getting on that way. And what you don't recognize, um, you'll recognize a mouse, but you won't recognize this particular hardware. This is a thermocouple which will be placed inside the calorimeter and it goes through this box which is technically called a go link which uh, disconnects there and we have here a USB port key which actually fits in the back of the um, laptop. There we go. It's now recognized we've got that and you are looking for Logger Pro 3.6. So double click on that, it will fire up. And the software is smart enough to realize that you have plugged in a thermocouple as opposed to say a pH probe and it will pull up a temperature as a function of time graph uh, ready to go. While we're waiting for that, let's talk about the calorimeter itself. The calorimeter, it's just a Dewar flask. You should have a magnetic stir bar inside it. And when it's actually operating, we put a lid on it so that there's minimal heat loss to the environment here. We're actually going to calibrate the calorimeter using hot and cold water we know how much energy it takes to heat up a gram of water, 4.18 joules per Kelvin. However, we're not sure how much energy it takes to heat up the calorimeter, and that's what you need the calibration for. We will be using um, hot and cold water. We'll use 400 mils of each. So first thing we do is, it's just room temperature water. We've got 400 mils of cold water here and I'll just pour that into the calorimeter. Turn the stirrer on. It's actually uh, mixing there and by this point this is now ready to go. We have hot plates around and you should heat up some water to a reasonably high temperature. It doesn't need to be boiling hot. The temperature of a decent cup of coffee is good enough. And so I've heated this. Or rather one of my assistants has heated this. and measure out 400 mils of hot water. So, to start off, I need to know how warm this is, and then I will measure how cold that is, and then I will pour them in together. This starts off by, where is my cursor? Collect. And the high temperature You hold it here until you're pretty sure you've got a steady temperature. Sixty point three appears to be pretty close to stable. Put it in the cold water. And this will go down to room temperature. and that's stabilizing at 24.4. Mix the two. Make sure everything has come out. Put the lid on, put the thermocouple through the hole. And wait until you get a steady temperature. 
So here we have the high temperature of the hot water. This temperature down here is the cold water. And we've now got a pretty steady temperature there. It's 40.7. And that is the temperature of the mix. Now, you will find, in fact, that that is not the, the arithmetic mean of the two. And that's because you took some energy to heat the calorimeter from the cold temperature, 24, up to 40.7. And you use this data to calibrate your calorimeter. You do this three times so that you're sure that you've got some decent data. And now that's finished. And so I click on the red button for stop. And you can print this by finding the print icon over here. And the printer is over at the other side of the lab. And you can get a hard copy of this. The other thing you will probably want is to collect the data and collect all the data. There we go. And copy, control C. And at this point, you want a spreadsheet program. This particular program calls it uh, LibreOffice Calc. You may have a computer that has Excel on it. But fire up a spreadsheet and copy, just cut and paste, the material, control V. OK. And there we have temperature as a function of time. And you can save this and eventually export it into a USB key that you can then take home and crunch the numbers with. So that's it for calibrating the calorimeter. It's now time to actually do some chemistry and mix some chemicals that are going to heat, uh, produce heat. To do this, let's uh, go back to Logger Pro. And now that I've printed it, I can start, get a new. I don't want to keep that. And so we're ready now to start with a new run. Let's prepare that and get ready for an acid-base reaction. The first thing you'll need to do is get the phosphoric acid and sodium hydroxide that will be reacting in these calorimetry experiments. The acids are here in Wahlberg 203. The acids are in cubitainers right here, and they will be labeled with the accurate concentration on the front. If it isn't already, turn the cubitainer down onto its front and take a beaker and collect the appropriate amount of acid. Some You may need to tip it up if it's feeling a little unenthusiastic. There we go. The key thing is always make sure that you have turned the tap all the way off and that you're not dribbling. Because if you do leave it that way, we will have a flood, which I'd really rather we didn't have. The sodium hydroxide is in similar dispensers next door in Wahlberg 202. The next thing you need to do is determine the actual concentration of the sodium hydroxide. That's going to take a titration. I hope you remember how to do that. Sodium hydroxide, which you will have gotten from 202, take a burette and rinse it with the sodium hydroxide, and then fill it, place it in a butterfly clamp ready to go. You will then be titrating 25 mil aliquots. And you will need to use a pipette for this, pipette and a pipette bulb of sodium hydroxide and, excuse me, of phosphoric acid, and dispense that into an Erlenmeyer flask. Now, you won't be using phenolphthalein. You are titrating phosphoric acid, in fact, only the first proton of phosphoric acid. And the end point of that titration is about 5, 5.5. 5. Uh, the phenolphthalein change range is about 8. So you need to use bromocresol green, which changes somewhere around about 5.5. 5. You really need to make color comparisons here. So take a small sample in a beaker of your acid and add some of the indicator. And in this case, that will go yellow, swirl it around. Take a sample of base and add 
indicator and that goes blue, I'm holding these so you can see the color change, put these on the white titration background on either side of the titration vessel, the end point is the green that comes halfway between the blue and the yellow. Once you have determined the concentration of the sodium hydroxide and how much of the hydroxide is equivalent to 25 mils, it's time to do some calorimetry. First thing to do is get your calorimeter clean and dry and make sure there's a magnetic stirrer inside on top of the stir plate and have the software ready to go to pick up uh, signals from the thermometer. Now let's say you have determined that it's 120 mils of the sodium hydroxide to 125 mils of the phosphoric acid will make for an equivalent amount. First thing to do is dispense 125 mils of the phosphoric acid. It'll always be 125 for all of your calorimetry runs. Use a grad cylinder, but be, whoops, be reasonably careful about how you do that. Okay, there's 100, and just pour this directly into the calorimeter. And now I need 25. All right, so I've now got 125 mils of phosphoric acid sitting in the calorimeter. As I said, we determined from the calculations, say, that it's 120 mils of sodium hydroxide that I need. So again, dispense 120, and we'll use a larger um, graduated cylinder this time. 120 mils of sodium hydroxide. Let's get down here for that. All right. And you make up the volume of the sodium hydroxide in all of these runs to 375 mils. This means that the total volume of liquid in the calorimeter during the um, reaction will be 500 mils. So you make it up using water. That's 250. And I need to pour that into another dry beaker. And I'll need another 125 mils to make it up to 375 mils total. So, 150, almost there. Got it. All right. So now I have hundred and excuse me 375 mils of a sodium hydroxide solution that has the right number of moles to react with one of the phosphoric acid protons we're now ready to actually do the calorimetry experiment first thing to do is put the thermocouple into the sodium hydroxide and measure the temperature so we'll start that and give it four or five seconds, and that's giving a consistent reading of 22.7 degrees. Then place the thermocouple all the way in. It's, the volume is such that you need to have the thermocouple all the way inside, and then when we're ready, pour the sodium hydroxide in. Ooh, make sure the stirrer is on. Close the lid and watch the temperature increase on the monitor screen. Once it has reached an equivalent temperature, uh, once it is stabilized rather, you'll want to stop this and, well, stop, there we go, and collect the data as you did for the, calibra the calibration runs. You should transfer the data to a spreadsheet and then to a USB key, 
and then also print it out, and the printer is next door in Wahlberg 202. You will repeat this. I'm going to turn this off now. Whoa, reaction's finished. You will repeat this several times so that you get consistent results for one proton, two protons, and three protons. So that's probably about nine calorimetric runs that you're going to be doing. Once you have finished each run, you will need to dispose of the excess acid. So, take the lid off the calorimeter, take the temperature probe out, and you'll be destroying it by using an excess of sodium bicarbonate. So, we'll use a small um, beaker and about five mils, not very much, of sodium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate, excuse me, and then dump the contents into a large beaker. Now, you wait until the fizzing stops and then pour the neutralized acid into a sink full of water, being careful that you don't throw the magnetic stirrer down the drain. When you have finished everything, you want to wash up with water, put it away in your locker, and you're done.